Hello, wonderful people. Justin Ribeiro here with a demo o demo things or such. So I've gotten a fair amount of questions lately about the notion of drag and drop and how that works. There's just a lot of questions around this and I've gotten quite a few of them and had to sort of work on an implementation of this lately and well, it seems confusing, but I assure you that it won't be, or ideally it won't be after we talk about it a little bit. So to help with this, I've written some demos as well as a sweet shim. Ooh. So DevTools is open. We've got a little demo number one oh here. Uh, we've got some generico things. We've got a main view, which has a shadow root, which has its own web component, which has its own shadow root. And then we've got a drop list and some drop list items. And these look like components. They are components. We've got a drop list over here. So many drop lists, so much depth. And um, one problem that folks have a tendency to run into is that when they want to use drag and drop, they find themselves relying on things like current target or event.target, which will ideally sort of give you so some lay of the land of, of what's happening and where your event is triggering, which if you've used the drag and drop APIs would be somewhat useful. And for the most part, you can get away with that when you're just looking at the top sort of document scope. But really what we want to do is look at event.composed path, which gives us an array of basically objects and nodes and elements where our listener is going to get triggered out. And we want this because it gives us the means to figure out not only um, what we should be operating against, but sort of where we are within the scope of all our roots and things. So if we look at our little structure here of things and we grab list item number one, uh, we can see that as I start to drag, uh, it gets a dragging attribute. Um, if we hover over some things, we'll note those that those drop list items actually take an over attribute as well. So the component says, oh, hey, look, I'm firing event because the drag over is fired, which is a good sign. We note the drop list is also sort of flickering because active is still there. Um, because whereas if we go between these things, it's like, oh, I'm still here. I'm good. I'm good. If we move to list number two, we can see it goes active. Our draggables have, have lost their sort of uh, over attribute. And if we let go, list item number one goes to list two, number one. Yay for us. And in this case, we're just doing an append. Um, these are drop zone moves. So we're just taking one and putting on the other. We can grab another one, throw it down there. We can grab something else, toss it up there, toss it up there. And we get sort of our world and scope of things. Now, under the hood, you're probably thinking, wow, that must be super complicated. And these components must use 27 million gazillion libraries to make this all work. And um, that would be a negatory ghostwriter. You were not clear to land. So if we look at drop list, we will note that, hey, drop, drag over, drag leave. sets an attribute to drop zone just for our convenience of this demo. Some internal methods here. If we look at these internal methods, we can see there's not much to them we can see that drag over is where most of our work happens, where we're setting our attribute to active because we're in the space, that event's being thrown against it. We're looking to see if this component already knows what element was dragging. Otherwise, it's going to look for that event that came down to us as it sort of came down our chain. And we're going to go, oh, hey, compose path. Who exactly am I dragging? And what's up with them? And realistically, it's usually compose path number zero. Like it's usually the first item in your right. But sometimes you'll end up with slot. You don't want slot. Sometimes you'll end up with a random fragment uh, that might be a root, but maybe it won't be. Regardless, we're going to, we two pass this. So you go find something within our thing. Once we found that thing, we're going to grab its root node to uh, gain our containment. And then from that root node, based on where we are, be it a component or whatever document placement we are, uh, we're going to search its shadow root ideally, find its query selector, and look for that thing that was dragging. Because if we look at drop list item, we note that when we start to drag start, we set drag in as an attribute. Which means that we'll always have one within the interaction state that is dragging, which gives us the means to say, oh, I can find you. Certainly speaking, we can see drag in and drag over sort of do other work so that we can say, hey, if I am dragging, I don't ever want to have uh, the remove attribute. Otherwise, I want to set over when I'm actually hovering over that thing. Same thing with leave. And again, there's not much here for our drop list item. Just some drag start events and all the things that make it work. Our other components are just wrapper shells. They have their own roots just for the sake of it. As if you were, you know, building, maybe you're building an app shell and you're throwing these things into other sub views and you're just trying to get everything to work. So it's kind of the use case for this one. Um, and you're probably saying, well, Justin, um, 
that's all fine and dandy, but this doesn't work on touch related things. And my response to that is you would be correct. And there are many, 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 uh, well, actually not many. There's a few polyfills out there. And in my case, um, uh, Br- uh, Bernardo Castillo's um, drag drop touch has been around for years, um, works pretty well, but it doesn't have support for event.composepath. And so I took this opportunity to uh, basically refactor that uh, into a ESM module uh, or <laughs> ES module, uh, DM being redundant in that case. Uh, so that one, it would be just a little easier to deal with just in terms so I could build it, but also so I could get an, a handle as to where I needed to actually inject uh, event.compose path so we can make it work. So in this case, I've reloaded. I'm in touch mode here in a Moto G4. We can see that the shim is loaded. If we look under the hood, we can see that really I'm just calling and saying, hey, do you have OnTouch? Otherwise, go lazy load the shim in. Um, and in my case, this is the non-built one because uh, I'm just running it out of the raw project at the moment. And then we have touch. And underneath the hood, beyond that, the components have not changed. There are no changes to these components. The drag handlers do not change. And if we grab number one, actually here, let's switch over back over to this. If we grab number one, we can see that indeed all the events fire the exact same way. I get a dragging attribute. I get the over attribute as I hover over things. Drop list has an active attribute. I drop it in here. Yay for us. We get more things that move around. Oops. Maybe I should grab something. There we go. And in this case, if we look at the source for this, uh, Really, the action again happens within the polyfill or the shim, as I'm calling it, uh, because we look at event compose path and we're looking for the closest thing that has a draggable attribute on it. So we're looking at that event state, looking through that list of things and saying, give me that thing. And there are a few other places within the shim that I've dropped compose path in, very similar to the way drop list finds things to figure out what its target is and where, where, where you need to drop so that you can drop onto something that is or rather has a drop zone attribute on it so that we get that compatibility between both desktop variations as well as mobile touch. So that's where, you know, most of our main action happens. And if you're saying, well, Justin, you know, that's all fine and dandy. It probably only works for this magical case where you've got all this depth, right? Well, not really. So in this case, we've got another demo where it's the sub list view. So we have one root. And in this case, the same sort of things. Uh, we can grab it, move things around. Everything works fine. Uh, if we go up another level where we just have drop lists with light dom, uh, basically, uh, where we have these items at the top level, we again can grab stuff, drop them into places. Everything works the same. So we get the same sort of eventing um, that we would normally expect, including this drop list item. So if you're wondering why there's a drop list item outside of our uh, our component sort of sitting at the top level dock, this is to give us this faded uh, actual node. So it gives us a snapshot of it so that we can move it around because otherwise on touch it doesn't work. Um, and if we go uh, even uh, a level higher, we can say, well, what if I have no shadow roots at all? What if it's, I'm just straight up DOM? So in this case, we have a whole bunch of divs. Uh, again, draggable attributes. Drop zone still has a move attribute on it because we need that to keep our compatibility with the platform. In this case, I've just rebound all that stuff that was in a component at the top level. So here you can see I'm setting all the same events, all the same stuff, roughly the exact same code, same event compose path as well right here. No fancy overrides, no different polyfill, none of that. And we can grab stuff, drag them. You can see that the divs actually get the same attributes as if they were our little components. So all this stuff is, uh, it's a work in progress. I'm sure there are glitches and bugs in it. It works pretty well at the moment across a wide range of cases for web components as well as non-web component use cases. Um, all of this is in the repo. It's sort of hanging out. I just pushed it the other day. And uh, you can play with this shim. Um, I'm sure there are bugs in it. So, you know, you probably want to test it uh, as I will be doing as well over the next couple of weeks uh, to sort of iron out the rest of things. But ideally, this gives you an idea that one, you can do drag and drop with components with shadow roots and you can make that work all through the magic of event.composePath. Definitely look up the documentation on MDM if you have not read about it because this will resolve a significant portion of your problems. And number two, if you need another shim, um, that's an ESM module that you can lazy load. Uh, you can use my shim. Uh, that'll sort of define it. But again, all, uh, uh, burn, uh, all love for uh, Mr. Castillo's uh, drag drop touch, which has been around forever. Um, you know, I'm just shimming up. And you also, you can learn about element from point two if you like. Ooh, fancy. 
So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully it's just a little bit of information. If you want to play with those components I have, they are in the demo folder as well. So they all are stock uh, vanilla web components. There's no libraries or any of that jazz. Um, you know, 70 lines of code for a drop list. Come on, easy peasy. So if you have questions, do let me know. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful. Justin signing off.